Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you and welcome back to the channel where today you join me at one of the most mysterious automotive venues in the world. We're at Air Alessian, the home of Volkswagen's private test track. And today I'm here with Bugatti, not only to experience a little ride in that very Chiron behind me, but because something quite special has just been unveiled. Let's head inside and take a look. In a few moments, I'm going to jump into the Chiron that's outdoors to go for a ride in it. But before we do that, you have to check this out. And I can't believe what I'm about to be showing you. I don't mean the one to eight scale Lego Technic Chiron that's behind me that we saw recently. Not even the second Chiron that's here in the traditional dual blue Bugatti paintwork. But take a look at this. The full one-to-one -one scale self-propelling and driving Lego Bugatti Chiron. This is a world first. Let's take a quick look around it. But literally, this car drives itself and it is made entirely out of Lego. It has about 5.3 horsepower from 2,304 electric Lego Technic motors. It is just, well, incredible to look at it. Look at the likeness with the real car. It even has animated light sequences, the wing that opens and closes. We'll come around and have a quick look at this before we run over more of the details after the ride in the real car. Everything, it's built around a steel frame, but all of the surfaces you see, all of the mechanicals are the electric systems from Lego Technic. It even has a Lego Technic speedometer going on inside there behind the steering wheel, which mimics the real car. Everything is done using existing Lego Technic pieces, but you look at the skin, the way it folds and takes the shape of the real car. The engine back here, if I just show you quickly we have an example of here so they have to manage the thermal side of things and to actually physically fit it in between these ginormous rear tires that you have so it's wearing the wheels off the real car the wing lifts up and raises up but this is an electric Chiron in real life powered and run by Lego parts and components and made entirely from Lego you could sit in it you could drive it that is just crazy and look at it here next to the real car with the horseshoe grille at the front, the splitter that matches up, the wheels that are the same, the C that runs around the door frame. How crazy is that? But let's head outside and go for a ride in the car that's out there and we'll come back and check this out afterwards. Unfortunately, the weather today is not exactly on side, but what we can do is jump into the Chiron, the real car, for a little experience with it out on this area behind me. We're in the middle of the test track here at Air Alessia, and it's a pretty special location. It was built back in the Cold War because, quite literally, this was a no-fly zone, so you couldn't spy on what VW were doing at all. We're in the centre of the area which houses a high-speed circuit with straights of 9 kilometres of length. That's where Bugatti set their records with the Veyron going 400 107 kilometers an hour and more recently with the Veyron Supersport with 1200 horsepower going up to 431. This car, the Chiron, is limited to a top speed of 420. But let's take a quick look around it before we jump in just to go out and explore and see what it's like joined by Andy Wallace. So this is the exact car that I drove last year, finished in the gold mixed with the carbon fiber that you have around it. But back here, the 1500 horsepower, 1600 newton meter quad turbo 8 litre W16 engine. The crazy engine that offers so much of that torque pretty much throughout the rev range. It's sitting in handling mode with the rear wing raised up here. You've got the full uh, width rear light as well. But obviously not exactly the best conditions as you can see from the uh, rain water that it's picking up. But such an iconic design maintaining the Bugatti horseshoe at the front. The headlights and other details around it. Anyway, let's find Andy, jump in and go experience this car and see what it's like even in these conditions. For this ride then, I am joining Mr. Andy Wallace, the legend himself, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you very much. And um, I do apologize for the horrible weather that we've got. That was the one thing we couldn't order today. <laughs> but here we are inside the Chiron. Yes, but what we do have is lots of space mm -hmm. and um, it, it's very interesting. I've been driving the car this morning. There's so little grip on the surface, but yet with the, the amount of traction this car can provide, you can just bam, full throttle and go through all the water. You feel it's moving mm -hmm. around and the systems are operating, but you can put almost the full 1500 down on the tarmac, which is amazing. That was one of the things I remember experiencing even on the first drive. 1500 horsepower is a whole lot. That is a big number, even on a dry, terrain you would struggle to get all of that power down 
You would think so, wouldn't you? But um, with all my driving, and now it's um, it's above 80,000 kilometres now in, in Chiron. 80,000 kilometres you've driven Chirons? It's, it's crazy, isn't it? It's, it's, <laughs> um, it is a good job. But I mean, I don't know if you can see this if we roll along, but um, this is the, at the moment we're showing tyre pressures. Mm -hmm. As soon as that blue number at the bottom, um, as soon as we roll, the blue number will actually change the temperature. Yeah. So you see we've got 50 degrees. So in order to get 100% traction in first gear, you just need to see 25 is great, even a little bit less will work, or anything more, Okay. and that's 100% traction when you go full throttle, and that's not electronic trickery, that's just traction, grip. Yeah, um, which all-wheel drive, of course. Yeah, it's four-wheel drive, it's weight distribution, it's suspension geometry, it's tyres, um, it's just, you know, everything together puts all that power on the road, because obviously you could give a car 5,000 horsepower, but if you can't put the power on the road, it's not going to accelerate any faster. No, that's true. That is absolutely the absolute key thing with these kind of cars. But the crazy thing with the Chiron is you have all of that and then you mix it in with the luxury of this interior with the carbon, the leather, the beautiful finish, the comfortable seats, that view across the engine. It's a magnificent thing, this car. Every time, just even looking at one is truly special. It's, it is beautifully put together and although it's incredibly fast, as, as you know, it's also, it's so refined and luxurious, normally that and performance are opposite ends of the scale. Mm -hmm. So if we just dash across here, we're going to run through a whole load of water, it, it, um, it's probably not going to feel that pleasant because it's patchy water, um, but on the other hand, I think it'll be just fine. Okay then. So, what I've got on here, uh, we can, we're just going to measure that this is going to hold max power, yep. max speed, um, max power, max speed, and max RPM. Okay. And we'll just see, so I'll pop it into first gear, and we're going to go. You ready? Yeah. My goodness. and you feel the lack of grip, but the systems are keeping it all under control. 224 kilometers per hour in that. In a car park, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. So, um, yeah, so let you use up to 1,380 horsepower there. Right, and, and depending on which bit of the road you use, whether it's wetter or drier, earlier it put down 433, I think, is the most it's put down this okay. morning. Um, but again, it's, it's so, yeah, so patchy. Um, the other thing that's quite interesting is, again, with all this um, water around, it's just not going crazy, but just seeing how much lateral G you can pull. Mm -hmm. For that, you've actually got to look at it because it's an instantaneous reading. Yeah. But you would expect it in the dry, but... Oh, okay, yeah, we're pulling, one? One, we're pulling one G, or 0.9. I think you can get just past one if you... Yeah, you got one G there. I'm holding on tight. <laughs> Which is amazing, isn't it? You think how slippery this road is. Wow. Goodness, I had to hold on pretty tight <laughs> through that. And you were splashing through the puddles. So, yeah, it's quite amazing. Um, I'm sure I've already bored you with this before, but it's it's worth probably reiterating in, in that we all talk about these massive horsepower numbers and everything's all, you know, we're, we're talking more than race car numbers yeah. for horsepower. But if you've driven um, and you've driven lots of things, if you drive a, a very high performance engine, generally what you sacrifice is you sacrifice durability, well, durability for one, sure, you sacrifice drivability um, and flexibility. Mm -hmm. Because normally you're pushing the envelope in, in the direction of power and you have to give up something. Yeah. So with this, what is incredible is 1,600 newton meters of torque from two to 6,000 RPM. Yeah. And that basically means that yeah, by the time you've got the throttle all the way pinned down to the ground, you're already pulling your max torque. Yeah. Which, which is crazy. So if we go, let's say we go into third gear, um, still at very low RPM, if you decide you want to go, you just open the throttle, and there, almost no lag at all. <laughs> it goes. That's up to 200 kilometers an hour again, just which, like that. Which is crazy. Just rolling along in third yeah. gear. Yeah. So, and of course, how that is achieved is with the Bugatti two-stage turbocharging, where you mm -hmm. actually block off two turbochargers. You force all the exhaust gases at low RPM through only two, because they are massive turbos. That effectively 
brings them down to half size in terms of spooling yeah. speed. Okay. So you get the boost immediately. And two turbochargers alone can produce maximum boost, but you do need the extra two to join the party because you need volume once the RPM rise. Yeah. yeah. So at 3,800 you open the second two. At 4,000 is when you need them, so you've got that small delay as they spawn. And as soon as you hit 4,000, you've got all four turbochargers pumping. And at 6,700 RPM, max power arrives, and the um, appetite for air is a thousand liters of air per second for combustion. This <laughs> a is, thousand liters a second. Isn't that amazing? And you know yeah. everything about this car is massive, massive, massive numbers. But then it's all wrapped up into a package where it's easy to drive. It's it's refined. It's comfortable. It's quiet. Um, it looks after you. I mean, we're doing silly things uh, with the car on crazy you know, yeah. no grip surfaces. And yeah, you can feel it moving around, but it's always looking after you. Yeah, for sure. And you feel even just sort of going through brief turns and things, it's, it's completely flat as well. Yeah, there's no body roll to speak of. Um, and just a fantastic machine. And I noticed we also went up to 1,389. Yeah, I've got a little bit more, yeah. I wonder if we can find a bit of road, which is slightly, got... Slightly grippy a bit. Yeah, I wonder if that, that even exists. Let's see. <laughs> that exists. Maybe this bit here. We'll just see if we can get it up to close to 50 at the ground and it is properly wet outside at the moment oh, still every time you put your foot down like that and I experience from the passenger seat it's that feeling of the, the car just pushing you back you feel like the whole thing just feels stuck and I remember you saying when we went out for the drive if you put like a 50 euro note on the dashboard you try and reach forward you have no chance when you're going flat out you just could never reach anything that would be put there but no and it genuinely it I know this sounds like a, an exaggeration, but I absolutely promise you it's true, especially the first few times you go in the car. When you accelerate, especially on a dry road, full, it actually takes your internal organs and it rearranges them. In fact, yeah. when you get out of the car, you're almost having to check that they're all back where they should be. <laughs> it's amazing, and I never had that feeling in anything else other than the Chiron. Yeah. Effortless power continually being delivered just doesn't stop. And I know because we went up uh, on the uh, drive we did before up to a total top speed of 363. Oh yes. It's pretty near about. the 380 top yeah. speed limit without the speed key. But even up to that speed it just feels like it's constantly going. It doesn't stop, it's relentless. It's still pulling and, and um, the important thing is the stability is, is incredible. You don't yeah. start feeling like you're going to wander around. No, I remember that, it's yeah. Narrow straight, yeah. And that's, I think that's quite an achievement. Um, in fact, I mean, of course, because the aero forces are going up um, exponentially in the square of the speed, you know, each few more kilometres you put on, you've got even more downforce, mm -hmm. um, but you've also got even more of a problem to manage the airflow. Yep. So it's, no, it's remarkable how stable the car stays. Um, I was, where did we, well, I was on a runway, and you know, when, you, when you're going up and down a runway, it seems a bit crazy, but you can't see the other end. A bit like yeah. here, actually. So yeah, you don't it's really so long here, isn't it? That you can't see nine kilometers ahead of you. That's it. And, uh, the curvature of the Earth means it dips away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? And, but but if you're if you've got a sort of a finite distance, like we do when we're doing this diagonal run, um, unless you're going to put some cones down, you can't actually judge where the other end is. So you've got yeah. to, the easiest way to do it is just measure it on the trip. Okay. Um, yeah. And so that's what I did when we were on the runway before, and. and you just say to yourself, okay, I've got, let's say you've got 4Ks, well, let's give it 3Ks and we'll jump on the brake. But yeah. you reach the speed limiter at about 1.9Ks. No, from, really? From without the... 1.9 kilometres to the speed limiter in the Chiron. Yeah, to the, wow. to the 380, the first speed limiter. So, Goodness me. And I noticed also this car's done 30,308 kilometres. And it's been all over the world. It's done lots of test drives in Dubai, in, in Bahrain. Everywhere. Uh, I mean, I noticed it's a Middle Eastern spec car. Yeah. As well. But. And it is a genuine workhorse, but... Absolutely fantastic as always. 
Thank you very much for taking us through it and the experience. Well, and also, what are you going to do before you show my my boss how much fun we're having in this car? Yeah. You've also got to spin on it to say that it's really hard work too. Otherwise, they might not pay. Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely, it's the <laughs> toughest job ever imaginable. I'm sure. <laughs> no, it's it's. Um, I tell you what, it really is a pleasure every time you jump in the car and shut the door, and I, oh. I, know I really mean that. And I've been driving cars for a very long time, and this makes me feel alive every time I jump in it. So you can't say more than that, really. Well, thank you very much. What an awesome experience as always, but the car is off. A big thanks to Andy for coming back on the channel, teaching us through. I love the way he talks about the cars. He knows so much, but let's head back inside now and take another look at the Lego one-to-one -one Chiron. All right, back inside. Let's take a more detailed walk around of the full-size Lego car. I never thought that I would actually be filming a one-to-one -one Lego model, a Lego Technic Bugatti Chiron. Just to explore this more, the likeness with the real car is really quite amazing. Look at like the headlights, for example. They had to make new transparent pieces, but they are animated and they will show that sequence. We'll check that out in a second. Coming around the car, the way they've designed the skin, it's all kind of movable, but makes the shapes. And even inside, you can actually see that the entire thing is all Lego Technic. If I just come in really close to this, you can see even inside there, Lego Technic components for the entire thing. Of course, it's wearing the Bugatti badge at the front, the emblem inside the grill at the front there. The whole thing though, just shaped, designed to match with the real car. It has blinkers in the mirrors, indicators there, this kind of carbon fiber effect that's used for parts that would be carbon fiber on the real car. Of course, there's no glass. It's a Lego model. Just look at the inside. Look at the dials and the gear lever that match up what we've seen outside on the real Chiron, all here on the Lego model, even the windscreen wipers. So the Chiron Sport was introduced recently with lighter carbon fiber wipers. I wonder if this has those fitted. The C that follows around the outside, finished like the real car. But just look at this, the way they've built it, the way they've illuminated all of this, the EB logo for a Tori Bugatti, the exhaust system down at the back. We're probably not gonna get a loud startup out of this, but everything is designed to match the full scale car, even the covers over the back of the W16. This is quite ridiculous. So they have to decouple the motor to be able to break the car because obviously the way this is done as a driving car means that a lot of engineering had to go into it. A lot, a lot of hours, I imagine, to create and make it function correctly. Let's have a demonstration of the lights. The way they start up is exactly matched to the sequence of the full car, now on its main beam, controllable. This is really quite amazing. This is a proper big boy's toy, and the noise you can hear in the background is the compressor starting up so we can demo the rear wing, but the lights turn off using the same sequence. The indicators, the hazards, you can see all around it. Actually, like an actual car. The speedometer is working as well, up towards the top speed. It's about 500 kilometers an hour that the speedometer says in the real Chiron, about 60 or so in this car, but it drives at 30 kilometers an hour, maybe slightly faster electrically on the move. You can also see the pressure gauge on the left, which will tell us when it's possible from the compressor to raise up the rear wing. Now the magic happens, the car goes into its handling mode. So the wing actually, as you can see, can pivot to various different angles. The motors that lift and raise it out, so the car has cooling underneath that. And also the full scale car sits down into its mode when you want to go for high speed. But just like the real Chiron, the wing lifts up at the back, so you can see how that works here. It's completely modeled off the exact car. And we can also put it back down again as well now. You can see that tucking back in. Magic. How awesome is that? There we go then, a first look at the full scale Lego car. Not just any car, the Bugatti Chiron. I never thought that would actually exist, but here it is, they've revealed it today. We've been able to take a look around as well as experiencing the actual car, again with Andy Wallace. Always a delight to experience his passion and enthusiasm. But just looking, at these two. How cool is it that they have made that so accurately replicate the original car? For car fans out there, for model car fans, for Lego fans, it is incredible that this exists. So, so awesome. I can't believe it, but here we are. It is there, it works, it does its thing. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Thank you to Bugatti for the opportunity to come down. Thank you to Lego as well. I hope you've enjoyed the video as always. Make sure to be subscribed and I'll catch up with you again very, very soon. Cheers.